Yes, like it's perfect. We can see your face. We can <laughs> hear you. So all right, it's all we have. So what? So uni- what? You uni- so how do you? What? How do you pronounce this university? Utrecht. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you can say it one more time. Utrecht. Utle. It's close. <laughs> But it's kind of, Utrecht. but it's like, u- u- but it's not Utre, it's Utre. Utrecht. Yeah. <laughs> nope. <laughs> no, I can't even speak Spanish. Not going to have a chance <laughs> with that one. And that, and that particular university has been around for a long, long time. It's been around since the 1600s. I think so. Like, it's yes. an old university. Yeah. Yeah. Very old. I, I was surprised. Like, wow. Been around for a long time. So you did your research. No, um, I, I don't often, but it was like, okay, where who are, where are these guys anyway? What, and it's late, isn't it? Um, what time is it over there? It's six, so it's not that late. Okay, like six in the evening. That's not too bad. So it's not that. No. All right. So, so how, like, how, how, so do, how do you like being here? <laughs> Well, I'm I am glad that uh, that you guys contacted me. In fact, um, who was the initial woman? It was um... Ostiente. Yeah, again, I'm not going to be able to do that. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. It's cool. No, no, I, I, I did a conference. I did the um, the Gather Festival over in um, Stockholm. Uh, mm-hmm. last year and thank god and we, i didn't i didn't need a translator because most of the people you know english is their second language and so <laughs> but yeah I had, a, I had a tough time there with a few people so okay that language is hard like <laughs> even for us <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, like my name is demi so i think it's easier to pronounce okay demi <laughs> that's that's easy yes. my name is liana miona Liana. Oh, Liana? Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. Demi and Liana? Oh, I got you guys. I got you guys completely sorted out. <laughs> so don't worry about that part. <laughs> okay, so what, what, how, how do you want to do this? What do you want to, how do you want to open? Yeah, so I have like a few questions for you. Mm-hmm. But before we start the questions, there's like a few yeah, kind of like questions we have to ask before we start the interview. Because it's okay for you if we record the interview. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, thank you so I, I much. I always record the audio on my side anyway, just because. And so if you want the audio from this, uh, I can drop it into Skype after we're done. Oh, thank you. That would be perfect. Yes. Yeah. And then just so you know, like um, after the interview, we will transcribe everything, but we will only share the information with like Jens and our other group and with our teacher. You can, but we won't be published uh, Look, I'm an open book. You can share this with anyone you want. I don't care. <laughs> it's, it, okay. it's ser- seriously, I mean, after the after the documentary and everything else that I've done, uh, seriously, I, I have no no problem with anything. In fact, most like of the videos... Anymore. Yeah, most of the videos I put on my channel are Creative Commons license, which is not only do I put them up, I encourage people. It's like, yeah, take my videos. Do what you want with them. So yeah, yeah. Please feel free. You have my permission to use my stuff in anything you want. Perfect. Thank you, Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, like the first question is like, when did you start questioning the shape of the earth? Uh, 2014. So in 2014, I was, uh, look, I had looked at just about every conspiracy you could think of, you know, Americans like looking at conspiracies anyway, because we have the best conspiracies. We do horrible things, but (laughs) sometimes it's not exactly horrible. We're the good guys, but sometimes we're not so good, but we Mm -hmm. try to paint it like, oh yeah, we're America. So thumbs up. Right. (laughs) Um, so I looked about just about everything. And then in 2014, I had looked at this and I thought, oh, this is terrible. (laughs) This is awful. Everybody hates flat earth. It's like, ugh, because we know, Mm -hmm. right? We know it's a globe. And then I just started staring at it. It's like, how do you know it's a globe? In fact, there was an interesting quote by George Orwell that caught my eye, you know, the guy that wrote uh, 1984. And he said, he goes, it's really interesting. He wrote this in 1946. He said, he goes, you go ask anybody on the street, 
how they know the world is a globe. And the first response will always be, well, we know. It's known. It's a known fact. And then you say, really? How do you know? Then people start to get irritated. Because remember, this was in 1946. NASA wasn't even founded until 1958. So how did everybody in the world know in 1946 that it was a globe? And then I found out slowly but surely, you didn't know. You were told this. And that was the difference. You were just shown this globe in your classroom. And it's like, it's there for year after year after year, especially in the States. And by the time you're done graduating from high school, you just assume it's real. I mean, we, we believe the world that is presented to us. And if you come from a science background, there's this responsibility, which is what George Earl was talking about. He's not a flat earther, but he was saying, look, basically people will believe anything that scientists tell them, period. And so science gets this, it's this slippery slope where they, uh, they, science will push out the narrative and uh, people just just go into it. So anyway, I looked in, sorry, long answer. Uh, I, I looked into 2014 and I didn't like it at all. And I just kept hammering on it until about 2015. And in the beginning of 2015, I said, yep, yeah, you know what? I give up. I'm going to make a series of videos. I'm going to put them out on the internet and, and just ask the internet and say, you know what? I don't believe in the, I can't prove the globe anymore. So tell me where I'm wrong. Tell me how I screwed up. And honestly, I thought for at least the first six months that somebody was going to come back to me come and say, me. you know, that that's where you screwed up. And that wasn't the case. So. Mm -hmm. so like you say, we don't have proof to prove the earth is a globe. Right. But what is the proof you use that the earth is flat? Oh, what proof do I have that the earth is flat? Okay. You're going to like this answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, because I, I treat it like a court of law. Um, and that is, can I prove to you that the earth is flat right now? Can I prove it to you? Probably not. But I can create so much reasonable doubt in the globe. I can punch so many holes in the, in the globe. That the only place you have left to turn is some sort of flat model. And so the the stuff we have we throw out there of course it's circumstantial no question but reasonable doubt wins in court every hour of every day all you have to do is create reasonable doubt so um the the by far the the most common proof that people use in our community is long distance photography so long distance photography if you're looking off into the distance mainstream science says that the curvature of the earth is eight inches per mile squared which means eight inches per mile per mile. So it gets steeper and steeper. So at three miles, it's uh, three times three is nine times eight, 72 inches. At 10 miles, it's 800 inches. And at 50 miles, it's 1,600, 1,700 feet. And it just gets steeper and steeper. Well, the problem there is that when you get off to distances of 30, 40, 50 and farther, there are objects that should be on the other side of the hill, should be behind the curve. And they're not. And and then and it's like well we should have we would have figured this out years and years and years ago well no we, what's happened is is HD technology has changed everything beforehand if you had an old camera I mean we're talking cameras even twenty years ago you could zoom off into the distance and it would just be this blurry mess but now HD you can find boats right there that should have been gone and that's what's really really changed and here's where it gets even weirder. Not only that, but you see these boats and these oil platforms and lighthouses or whatever it is, and you can see the horizon behind those objects. You remember, the curvature has to be in front of them, has to be, uh, especially if, if the camera is just right on, at the water level. And so it, you know, that is by far the, the most common proof. There are others if you have, I mean, have you heard my top five? Like I have watched the doc documentary on Netflix. That's it? That's all you watched? <laughs> No, no, I'm, I'm more, but like that was like the biggest uh, thing I watched. Okay, okay. So the, the top five real fast. Long distance photography, um, gravity versus the vacuum of space, which is also a very interesting one, which is, okay, what wins, gravity or a vacuum? Um, vacuum will win every single time. Uh, when you suck um, a soda out of a glass with a straw, right? That's just you creating a slight vacuum force. Why isn't the gravity keeping the, the, the soda in there? Well, because the vacuum won. Um, mm. if, if you take a, the, the second floor of wherever you are right now and turn it into a vacuum chamber, put a cork in the ceiling, pop it, what's going to happen? Instantly, violently, the, the air is going to equalize and it's going to go upstairs. So the question is, why didn't gravity keep the air in your room right now? And you say, well, because the vacuum is stronger. I go, okay, 
bear with me. When you go outside, why is the atmosphere still there? Why didn't the atmosphere get sucked off by the vacuum of space, which is way bigger and way more powerful? And you and your initial reaction, you're gonna be you're, you're knee jerk it. You're gonna say, "Oh, because of gravity." I go, "Okay." You mean the gravity that didn't keep the air in your room from going upstairs? That same gravity, and you got nowhere to go. No scientist can tell you where the where our atmosphere ends and space begins. Oh, they can approximate and say, "Well, it's 600 miles. It's 800 miles, or whatever it is." It's like, really, what happens? At that point, when, when the atmosphere ends and space begins, what happens? No one, no one can talk about it. It's the law of thermodynamics. Mm -hmm. It's not a guideline. It's not a rule. It's a law. Pressure cannot exist next to non-pressure without a barrier. That's the second one. Third one, um, the eclipse shadow is too small. The eclipse shadow, the blackout shadow that, that, you know, if you've ever been in the middle of an eclipse, is only 70 miles wide. Well, the moon is 2,000 miles wide. Why is the blackout shadow only 70 miles wide? Uh, we, we say the moon is about that size. So why does the shadow get smaller? And you can talk about optics all you want. And it's like, okay, if that's the case, then why, when the, the Earth is in front of the sun, why isn't there a blackout zone on the moon uh, four times as wide, which is, you know, 250 miles? The moon should turn into a big eyeball. It doesn't. It's just this big blood moon. Why? Don't know. No one talks about it. Uh, the moon temperature is cold. That's weird. Uh, meaning uh, in moonlight, the moonlight is actually colder than moon shade which is the opposite of the sun. You know, you have sunlight and sunshade. It's actually colder in the shade when you're in the sun, but it's actually the opposite when you're in the moonlight, up to 13 degrees Fahrenheit. You can test it with a point and click thermometer anytime you want. In fact, when you take a magnifying glass to moonlight, it actually gets cold. You can do this in universities. It's called a cold laser. So the question is, why is the moon generating a cold laser light? No, scientists will not talk about this. They're like, it just freaks them out when I throw it at them. Uh, last but not least, the fifth the fifth point is uh, the Van Allen radiation belts, which you've probably heard of, you know, discovered by NASA in the 1950s. Are they deadly? Yes or no? Simple question. Are the Van Allen belts deadly? Yes or no? If you say yes, then how did the Americans get through them without shielding? Because remember, the only things that can stop radiation, lead, gold, a whole bunch of water, right? The Americans used plastic and aluminum, and they went round trip. Not only just one way, round trips. Spent hours in them. Nobody died, nobody got cancer, nobody got radiation poisoning. There's still five of these guys walking around today. How? No one will talk about it. And if you say, okay, well, they're not deadly, then I say, okay, fine, go to the NASA website. Go to nasa.gov. There's a wonderful video on there. I don't know why they made it. Called Orion Trial by Fire. It was made in uh, 2014, which says that, oh, yeah, we can't test any new capsules because we haven't solved the radiation problem yet. What are you talking about? You solved it back in the 60s. In fact, you've never had a problem with radiation, ever. Ever, ever, ever. Why are you now saying that you have a problem with radiation? I threw those five questions out to an astrophysicist out in Georgetown um, a couple of years ago. That was it. He just walked away from the debate. He said, nope, not doing this. Because, and, and I don't blame him. Most scientists have a very tunnel vision. They can only address certain topics. I was hoping he would address one of those five, but he didn't. So... There you go. Mm -hmm. So I'm eating bread while I'm doing this. I didn't, I didn't have breakfast. Uh, <laughs> That's all right. Do it. All right. All right. So, like, how how many times, how how often do we get reactions from people who don't believe this, like from outsiders? Like bad reactions. Yeah, or good reactions. Oh, I get reactions every hour of every day. I mean, my, my email just doesn't stop. Phone calls don't stop. Texts don't stop. It is the most polarizing topic I've ever seen. And that's not an exaggeration. I don't care if you're talking about stem cell research or, or human rights of any kind uh, or abortion rights or whatever it is. Nothing sets people off like this. And the reason is, is because you can't walk away from it. With other things, with other conspiracies, if you don't want to look at something, you don't have to look at it. You can turn around. You don't even have to think about it again. But with this, this is different because this is the world you're you're living in. So if I come to you and I say, yeah, what you think the world is right now, it isn't. For some of you, mm -hmm. they just get an offense. It's like, you know, I've literally had people come at me and say, how dare you? How dare you tell me the world isn't what I think it is? It's straight out of the Matrix in a way. You know, the, the 1999 movie, the red pill, blue pill thing. And, and the quote is actually very good, and that is, we don't free minds after a certain age. Because the older you get, the harder it, do, it becomes. I mean, me talking to senior citizens about this, whew, 
that is tough, especially if they're in the United <laughs> States, because, you know, they were they watched the, the moon landing on television. You know, they waved the flag and it's like, you know, they were so proud, tear in their eye type of thing. And so they get really, really worked up. The younger you are, the easier it is. Because, you know, you're you're forming your own opinions about the world. And so uh, as you get younger, 18 to 24, we're skewing a full third in this country. And under 18, we're almost half, which is interesting. But it's all anonymous. That's the tough part. So, like, <clears throat> you could you could get, I mean, the, the, the straw polls that I've been seeing show half, half, the, half the kids under 18, right? but only anonymously. You take those same kids into a room and it's like, oh, hey, anyone raise their hand and they think the earth is flat. Oh no, you're gonna get down to single digits. <laughs> you know, single percentages, why? Because of peer pressure. It's still so, so no. polarizing. So, there you go. But why do you think those kids are not, like, want to share their beliefs with their other students? Conditioning, mostly. And I think they do, but they do very quietly. Uh, you know, they throw it, 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 it's kind of, they come at people sideways, you know, the easiest way to, to approach someone with this topic is, yeah, I heard this really weird thing on the internet, these crazy people talking about flat earth, what do you think? And then they will, and, and they will react accordingly. Um, but it's mostly peer pressure, like anything. I mean, again, you're showing the globe and the, the globe sitting right there in your classroom. What are you supposed to do? And say, I don't believe in that. <laughs> You know, the teacher, you know, people will make fun of you. The teacher will make fun of you. Heck, we even have church congregations which have problems with their members, even though the Bible, that's a whole nother thing, uh, is basically a flat earth book. There's only like one verse in it that even talks about anything spherical at all, even remotely. And, mm -hmm. uh, and even, even the churches have a hard time embracing this. Mm. And what do you do with opinions uh, like better opinions from people towards your belief what do i do with different opinions that, that people like come to me with with... Like, like do you have bad experiences with people who are against your belief yes um yes. so far i've had to kill five people in self-defense uh, they were considered manslaughter cases. I'm totally kidding. I didn't kill anybody. Like, no wow. <laughs> You're thinking, okay, because it's America, we can get away with that? No. Maybe. No, no. As a matter of fact, most people, it's it's not that I, we have never had, we have had hundreds of meetups. We have had conferences in, in all different countries. We have never had a physical altercation anywhere. And the reason is, it's, yeah, fine. If I'm talking about Flat Earth, you're not hating me. You're hating the topic. You're hating the idea. Well, how are you going to fight an idea like anything else? It's it's tough to do. So yeah, some people get angry, but um, I don't get. I can't get angry back. And the and the reason is, it is it's a frustrating thing for flat earthers. Is um, I can't get mad because it's hypocritical. Because I used to be you. I was on that side of the fence. I was the the person that was. Uh, get you know looking at going flat earthers. That's stupid. <laughs> you know, make fun of those people. I, I was that guy. And then when I looked into it, it's like, wow, it's really not that crazy. So how can I get mad at somebody? If I get mad at somebody, it's hypocritical. Uh, it's, it's like, look, I, it, it completely undermines the journey. Everybody that goes through it does the same thing. Nobody gets into flat earth because they love it. Everybody hates it at first. Everybody just hates it, which is by, also, by the way, why our retention rate, they didn't talk about that in the documentary, our retention rate is so high. It's 99%, meaning once you get into it, you're in it. You're not going back to the globe. And the reason is, is because I didn't convince you. Um, or I didn't persuade you. You're the one that tore down the globe yourself. You're the one that says, I'll flat earth is stupid. I'll prove the globe. And then the, the longer you stare at the globe, the worse it gets. The more you, you try to look at the globe and try to figure out what, you know, the proof behind it, the worse it gets to where when you're done, you're the one that solved it for yourself. So how can you go back to the globe? Even if you want to go, again, matrix, straight line out of the matrix. Even if you want to go back to the matrix, how could you? You were the one that left. You left voluntarily. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you already said kind of you don't convince people to become a flat earner. Nope. But if you talk to someone who really don't believe in you guys, yep. like, do you kind of like convince them in a sort of way? 
Like, what how we do, do you react to their No, no, I, I get it. I get it. I get, I get what it, we do is we plant the seed, which is, again, another unsatisfying thing about Flat Earth, which is we tell people, look, and, and it's, a, it's a line that I use in, in every group setting that I do. It's like, I'm not here to convince you. I'm not here to persuade you. I'm just trying to get you to think about something maybe you haven't thought about before. And you resolve it for yourself. Which is normally something I say at the end of, of interviews, which is, you know, just don't take what I'm saying as, as at face value. Do your own research and ask questions. And if the people don't want to look at it, fine. They don't have to look at it, you know. But if once it sinks in like a seed, once it's in there for a little bit, oh, <laughs> you're screwed. <laughs> you, you, you can't get rid of it because eventually you just keep staring at it, staring at it. It's like, well, you keep going back and it's like, well, I have, I have questions. I have questions. I have questions. And mm -hmm. for me, I was really stubborn. It took me nine months. I've seen people, the, the average journey is about a couple weeks because there's so much content on the internet now. You can just go, you know, look up, look, and then eventually you're going to come to some sort of uh, point, uh, tipping point on your own. Uh, but no, we don't, we don't convince people. We just tell them like, look, think about it. We don't push them. That's, that's the beauty of, of the flat earth concept. It's kind of like, uh, I hate to use it nowadays, but it's kind of like a virus, <laughs> Because I, <laughs> I put that in the book last year, and it's like now I'm kind of regretting it. It's like, oh great, <laughs> super fun, uh, but but it is kind of like that where it spreads just by word of mouth. You don't even need computers to to do it. People just start thinking about it because you don't you know to go down to the beach with a camera. You don't need anything special to do that. You know, with to to look look up some of the the evidence we come up with. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> And do you feel the government is forcing upon us the globe discussion? Like that we have to believe in the globe? They're not... Sorry, I'm not... Don't worry. They're not forcing the globe upon us. They are just keeping it hidden as best they can. And I said, I know that I didn't really talk about this in the documentary as much, but what I'm saying is even the governments... Even our best and brightest didn't figure it out until almost 1960 because you didn't have the technology. Yeah, I get to remember that the technology we're talking on right now is not very old at all. We didn't even have HD televisions 20 years ago. Decent ones anyway. So back in 1960, we barely had decent pressurized airplanes and they were trying from basically the late 1920s up until about 1960 to try to figure this thing out. And then they finally did. You know, they, they found whatever was happening at the North Pole in the late 20s and then just kept doing Antarctica for the better part of 30 years. And when they figured it out, that's when they said, OK, we're just going to keep this thing a secret for as long as possible until we can figure out how to introduce this to the public or however we're going to do this. That's what we're going to do. And so, no, the, the government the government didn't build this. The government had almost nothing to do with it. All they did was they found, you know, they found something that they decided, kind of like the Raiders of the Lost Ark. It's like they found something really secret. They're going, yeah, we probably shouldn't show anyone this. And that was it. And so it wasn't, and that might be one of your follow-up questions, which is, what did they have to gain? What does the government have to gain from keeping it a secret? It's not what you have to gain. It's what you have to lose. Because remember, by 1960, our civilization was basically built. Everything was all, everything, the infrastructure was, was built in all levels. And it was built on existing technologies and existing paradigms. Well, that's now, with Flat Earth, that changes. So are you willing to risk all of that for what? I, I mean, think of it uh, just real quick. Um, economically, you would have to shut down world markets for several months to figure out what was going on. Uh, academically, you would have to rebuild all physical sciences. I mean, everything from archaeology, geology, biology, hydrology, so on and so on. Just whatever it is, you have to read. Astronomy and astrophysics, they close <laughs> and have to be like renamed for something else. Call it domology. I don't know. Something. <laughs> I mean, you'd have to rebuild all that. And then the biggest one, though, is the, the religious side of things. You're talking about, you know, the main five religious houses of this world, um, Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam and Christianity. You're giving them leverage against science now, which they haven't had for at least five centuries. Do you give that to them? Between those three things, you know, the big meeting of the secret people going... 
yeah, how bad could it get? And people are going, no, <laughs> no, it could get really, really bad. <laughs> so you just don't tell anybody and you build a fake space system and uh, you keep people away from Antarctica as best you can and keep it, keep it going for, it's just money and time. And that's what you do. You spend billions and billions of dollars. I mean, NASA, NASA, just our space program gets a budget of $53 million a day. That's a lot. That's a lot of money. For, for what? We don't even have a space shuttle program anymore. We don't go to the moon. What, what do we spend the money on? Well, other things. Keep things to keep this thing a secret. So there you go. Sorry, I ramble. Do you think at one point they stop keeping it a secret? Yeah. I don't know. Like now. What? <laughs> like, no, no. I think I think that's why we're even talking about this right now. Mm -hmm. If they wanted to shut us down, they could have done this years ago. Social media, we were being recommended for three years straight on YouTube. Recommended constantly. I mean, the numbers were going through the freaking roof. We were getting paid, some of us were getting paid pretty decent money every every month by Google, you know, to keep to keep this going based on hits and subscribers and stuff like that. And then they started slowing it down. But they, uh, it, everything that's been happening, we've gotten almost no resistance. So we've been doing somebody's work for them. And I, I've been trying to say this now for years, which is like, we're being allowed to do this. I, I think it's, again, when you try to keep a secret from somebody, with something physical, you can only keep it for so long. The technology is there. You know, people, especially with long distance photography and other scientific instruments that you can do, you know, not in Antarctica, people are starting to figure out, it's like, wait, there's something wrong with the world and you're not telling us. Well, sooner or later, you're going to have to, you're going to have to give it up. It's kind of like, um, uh, it might be an example. Uh, it's kind of like hiding cigarettes from your roommate, <laughs> right? You can move it around here and there, but sooner or later, they're going to accidentally figure out where the cigarettes are. And then, well, the, the jig's up. So, that's what I think. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think the role of the scientists are in keeping it a secret and the discussion of the shape of the earth? Almost nothing. Almost nothing. The scientists don't. In fact, it's better off the scientists don't know anything and act naturally, because they don't have to know anything. Um, in fact, the, the scientists. Remember, most of your physical sciences are based on an assumption of the globe. And fine, you know, you'll you'll make the math work one way or the other. But the scientists, as a, a scientific body as a whole, and really any other body as a whole, you don't. The the less people that know, the better. Um, it's called in the military, it's called compartmentalization. Uh, but really this is a need to know thing. This thing is so big that, that you really need to keep this a secret from just about everybody. So like, does the, uh, the three public, the, the three most high profile scientists in the world are, um, Neil Tyson, Neil. Brian Cox, Michio Kaku, right? I think they're all physicists and none of them, I think know anything. And you wouldn't want to tell them because you want them acting naturally. This is sort of, this secret is so big, you don't, it, it kind of weighs on you, I think, if you know. I think it, it, it just, it's so, it's so physically heavy that you don't know what to do with it. So most scientists don't need to know anything. They just go about doing their work. And it's same thing with most of the people that work at space programs. 99% of the people that work at space programs don't know anything. You know, because why would you? It's like, oh, he's polishing the fuel system. He's making a capsule. He's doing rocket fuel and all this. Why does the rocket fuel guy need to know? He doesn't need to know anything. The only people that need to know the telemetry guys. Those are the only guys. The guys that look at the data of when that thing goes up. Because that's wrong. The data is all screwed up. So you, you need to control those guys. And then maybe those bosses. But the rest of them, leave them out of it. Uh, ignorance is bliss. That's a famous saying, and I love it because the less you know, <laughs> the better. Uh, or the, one of the sayings, um, I love sayings, uh, is that what you don't know won't hurt you. And mm -hmm. that's, it's true. So no, scientists don't have to know anything. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think is your role in the discussion of the flat earth? My role right We're now is... Yours. My, my role is kind of like the if, if, if it was a university, if Flat Earth was a university, I'd be the freshman recruiter. Meaning, 
if you get into flat earth in the first few weeks of you getting into it, you're going to run into my stuff sooner or later. My stuff is really, really entry level. I wrote the, the 101 book for flat earth basically. And, and said, okay, here's the easy, because I like the lowest common denominator. You know, the people walking around the street, most people don't know anything about physics or engineering or chemistry. And so you have to, or math, <laughs> so you really need to boil stuff down for them. I mean, seriously, you know the people I'm talking about. Not not you guys. You guys are super smart. But people on the street, you know, you, you can see it in their eyes. They're not really smart. And you need to explain it to them. And so I created my series of videos, use no math at all the flat earth glues mm -hmm. and it just went into it's like look here's how i think it's working and if you want to go into advanced topics go ahead so i yeah i bring you into flat earth university but once you get past me you can go do whatever you want you want to do experiments you want to go after nasa you want to do the music program go ahead you don't have to you don't have mm -hmm. to so i run into people now that's like oh yeah i used to watch your videos <laughs> it's like okay <laughs> great <used> <laughs> But I don't blame them. Look, look, nobody watches everybody's stuff all the time. And it's like, fine, if you like my stuff, great. But if it was your, you know, how many people look at their freshman books, you know, when they become juniors and seniors? It's like, but at least they remember it, which is nice. It's like, so it's, I, I will take it. <laughs> like, do you have someone or like an author or person that you really like follow and read everything from or watch their videos? Uh, no, because the, it's, it just keeps changing constantly. So yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of content creators on YouTube, uh, but everybody, it, it's kind of this ebb and flow where, you know, some people will make videos for a while, then they'll take a break for a while. They'll make more videos, then they'll take a break. Um, I have regulars that I, that I talk to and meet with on, uh, on quite often. But they, and usually it's the people that do the conference presentations. So we've done conferences now in Raleigh and Denver and Dallas, um, and then other conferences in different countries. But the people that do the conferences are usually the ones I spend most, most of my time with. Now I've got some other, you know, sm smaller channels that I like their content, but I absorb a lot of stuff in media anyway. It's not just flat earthers. Uh, I, you know, coming from the conspiracy world, I there's that that changes every week. Uh, I I just I just absorb as much media as I can. So no 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 regulars. Mm -hmm. No one person. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And um, do you think you have like a big? Um, like a lot of power in a discussion of the shape of the earth. Say that question one more time. Do you think you have a lot of power? Do I have a lot of power? Yes. Oh, in the discussion. So yes. I, I think what you mean to say is, do I have a lot of influence in the topic itself? Um, some, I mean, I get invited to speak it, to do, do, do certain things. And I've done a lot of interviews because in the interview world, if you do if you do decent a decent interview, people will just keep asking you, you know, and, and it's like, oh, he did great here. Let's just grab him because media the media is really lazy, so the media doesn't want to hunt for people. So they'll they'll say, oh, they'll like listen to ten minutes of your interview. It's like, oh yeah, let's get him, and so and so they will. And it's like great, I guess. So um, I do have I do have some influence in that way, but I've I've learned that. My influence only goes so far. My influence will get you into the topic, but again, because my my stuff is yeah. is the entry level, people will go past me. It's like, okay, I've gone through all of Mark's stuff. What else is out there? And then they realize there's just tons and tons and tons of people. So I, I have some influence, but my influence is only limited to dragging, you know, to creating people, you know, getting people introduced to the topic. Mm -hmm. And more like getting the attention from them. And then they will find out for their own. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't even know if I... I won't even be the guy that usually convinces you. I will be the guy that, that plants the seed. That, that all of a sudden you hate me. Because it's like, oh, yeah, you're the guy that ruined my life. Because you got me thinking about this. And then I spent the next two months, you know, spending every waking moment. How has your opinion about the shape of the earth changed your life? Uh, personally or your work? Uh, everything. everything. So this is what I do. Oh. Everything that I do now revolves around it. 
uh, I do this 24/7. Uh, it is if I'm not if I'm not researching videos, if I'm not making videos, if I'm not doing conferences or meetups. I don't know if I if I if I, if I have any hobbies now. <laughs> Because all, all my hobbies are now gone. They've been chewed up by. There's only so much time in the day you can you can do this. So yeah, it's changed everything about my life. Um, and plus, it's allowed me to do things I never thought would be possible. I've been only doing this five years, and I'm one of the 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 guys have been okay. it's been doing it the longest. Five years is about as far back as anybody goes. And I've done conf like last year. I did conferences, for example, in Los Angeles, South Carolina, Calgary, Canada. Uh, Dallas, Texas, Stockholm, UK, Auckland, and I'm sure I'm leaving out a couple, but it was, and, and I did a commercial in Australia. <laughs> it's like, what? Okay. They're like a, mob, a mobile app company called me up and said, oh yeah, hey, would you like to endorse our, our, our phone app? And it's like, okay, sure. I don't even use apps on phones. Uh, but what was interesting was the only reason I got that commercial is because we had people, some of our members inside the corp company that hired me. So you know, we, we have people everywhere and that's how it seems to, you know, we have these secret people, <laughs> you know, I can tell when I meet them, you know, they ask the right questions. You can tell it's absolutely, but they're not going to admit it to their friends. Like, Oh no, I'm not a flatterer. Yeah, yeah, I am. I really am. And so it's, it's, it's really, really fun, but yeah, it's changed my life for the better. Um, I didn't really lose that many friends, but I gained like a whole family of people out there and they're really open and everybody that's in flat earth is really, really open-minded and friendly and, uh, supportive of each other. And again, we're like this, this big, uh, weird, happy army <laughs> that, that, or, or, or sometimes I call them like, um, cause we try to turn people like vampires. <laughs> And so we're, we're like happy little flat earth vampires that go around and, and we don't even force ourselves upon you. It's like, you want to get bit? You want to get bit? I'll bite you. <laughs> so anyway. Did you ever regret the choice of like doing research on the Flat Earth Society? Uh, okay. First off, the, the, the original Flat Earth Society has nothing to do with us at all. Um, we were, in fact, it was really strange when I first got into this, I looked at the Flat Earth Society, the one that was out on the internet, which hadn't really been doing anything. They were just apathetic. They were just sitting there, just a few people and they weren't doing anything. And they were letting trolls run all over them going, what are you guys doing? And so social media, you know, now we can do anything we want. And so we just ripped through them. Um, and so we don't have anything to do with them at all. None of the speakers do. Uh, I mean, I joined one of the flyer societies just so I could see, well, you, what are you guys doing? They weren't doing anything. Um, but as far as do I regret, do I regret anything as part? Uh oh, you froze for a second there. Do I regret anything as far as the, um, uh, like doing the research? Still there? Yeah, like, because like when you start, start doing the research, then you start questioning the shape of the earth and then you became like, then you start believing in the flat earth society. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Do I, do I, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Do I, did I regret anything? Yeah. Everybody does. Yeah. Everybody that gets into flat earth regrets it immediately. They think it's a horrible idea. And you, you guys would too, if you looked into it. Um, because, because if once you turn, once you become, once you look at it and say, oh my God, there's, there's nothing to the globe at all. There's the globe is just this hollow idea that was put out there. Once that hits you, you realize that for years of your life, <laughs> you were following something just because somebody told you to follow it. And that, mm -hmm. that frustrates you. Um, there's an old, old saying, which is people would rather believe, uh, what is it? Hang on. It's easier to fool somebody than to convince them they've been fooled. Nobody likes to believe that they were tricked by anything. It's like, no, nah, he didn't get me. He didn't get me. Yeah, I did. I mean, street magic, you can, you can do that to people all day long, but people feel bad when they do. It's like, oh, because you think you're dumb for, for believing it in, in the, or for being tricked. And so it's, it's really interesting to watch people when they turn because yeah, they have this feeling of regret, kind of like me. And it's like, oh, mm -hmm. I shouldn't have looked at this. But then again, it's that ignorance is bliss. Yeah, you're happier when you don't know things, but when you find out it's better, it's 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 more satisfying to know the truth. How's that? Mm -hmm. And what's your definition of the truth? 
My definition of the truth. Wow, that's tough. You know, nobody's ever asked me that question. Um, and I've done hundreds of these things. Uh, my definition of the truth. Uh, oof, an objective fact. How's that? Objective fact. Not a fact based on a bias, but a, a provable, repeatable fact that can be tested by anyone. That that would be the truth. Uh, that someone, and, and I know that's tougher to say than others because obviously, again, which is, it's weird because like, for example, some people say, well, we've seen pictures from space. And, you know, it's like, well, yeah, but that's just the military. It's only the military saying that they were in space. And as you know, military can, you know, tell a tale from time to time. You know, they will lie to you for various reasons. I mean, officially, you know, you got to realize there are no spies in the world, right? There are no spies. Mm -hmm. Because there are no spies. No spies. <laughs> well, and I, I, you've seen spy movies. Ask any government, though. It's like, do you have a spy program? No, we don't. We have an intelligence network. Is there anybody in it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got some people in it. Who are they? I'm not telling you. Because <laughs> they're spies. <laughs> so they will never admit to the spies. Um, so an objective, uh, objective truth uh, that can be. Um, here's a here's a great example of it. Um, here, let me think of it real quick, real fast. So, what's the boiling temperature of water at sea level? 212 degrees Fahrenheit, right? You can test that right now. Anybody can test that. It's an objectable, objectable, object, objective <laughs> fact, all right? However, what's the core of the earth look like? You don't know. Nobody knows. But you see these wonderful drawings with this cross section of, of red and orange and yellow and white, right? Perfect 1,000 mile bands. Mm -hmm. Well, how deep can you, what's the deepest hole ever drilled? Remember, it's supposedly 4,000 miles to the core of the earth. What's the deepest hole ever drilled? 2,000 miles? 1,000 miles? 100 miles? 10? It's eight. It's 12 kilometers. 12 kilometers is the, I, I converted for you guys just for the heck of it. That's the deepest hole ever drilled. The, Russian, the Russians and the Germans did that, 12 kilometers. So what exactly is that cross section of the earth showing? So the core of the earth isn't, an, uh, isn't the truth because no one knows what it is. And now science will tell you that's the truth, but in the fine print, they'll say, we have no idea what's going on down there. But, <laughs> but that's the fine print. They don't like saying that. The, the earth drawings should literally be a globe, if you believe in that, with a big question mark in the center of it. That's what it should be. But science hates <laughs> doing that. They hate question marks. So they'll say, well, that's our best guess. So that's the fact. It's like, really? That's what you're going with? So there you go. Mm -hmm. And what is your truth then? What do I, what is, what is your tr truth? Truth. What is my truth? You mean like what, what do I think the truth is just in general? Yes. Something I can prove for myself or that I can prove with a group, another group of people. If, if I can't just do it myself, um, mm -hmm. anything, it, it's not something I, I mean, yes, I make leaps of faith like anybody else, but mm -hmm. in this case, and so when I say your follow-up question might be, is the flat earth the absolute truth? Like I stated in the beginning, can I prove it to you right now? No, if I could, I'd be the most famous person ever. <laughs> Uh, or or be dead because they'd kill me. Because <laughs> that's what they do in the movie. It's like, wow, look at that. It is flat. And you're dead. Um, but for me, the, the absolute truth is something you can prove for yourself. It's not just something, yeah, I mean, I know sometimes you can say you, know, you can't trust your senses. I, I get that. But that's just the, the power of illusion. The power of illusion is also a tricky thing. You know, people can show you things. But if I could go out and repeat whatever that was for myself, then yes, that would be the truth. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Flat Earth Society uh, has different uh, perspectives on some topics. Yes. How do you experience them within the community? Okay. And just so you know, again, Flat Earth Society doesn't have anything to do with us. But the Flat Earth community... That, that I deal yeah, with. It's like most of the difference except between a society and a community. The society is actually the 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 flatter society if if we'll we'll treat it like software. Flatter society would be flat earth one one point oh. We're flat earth two point. We exist only on social media. They existed before the internet. And they're the old school people that that didn't have the tools that we had. 
So they just rested on their laurels and said, well, the Earth's flat. And used whatever, you know, they used some of their old technology experiments, which was fun. But they just rested on their laurel, their laurels and be, became complacent. Whereas we, we go, we move forward as fast as humanly possible. And so as far as the differences, no, forget about the differences between them and us. The differences in our own community are mostly trying to prove the little things. Like, you know, at least 30% of our members don't even believe there's a dome. They don't even believe, and, you know, that, that we're in a building with walls and a floor and a ceiling, that it's just this flat, infinite plane, which is fine, except that you still have to deal with that vacuum versus the grav, you know, versus gravity question, which you can't do without some sort of container. Um, other people have arguments about the sun and the moon. Other people have arguments over the size of the continents. Uh, and it just goes on and on and on. But it's okay. In fact, it's these little differences and debates which make us stronger like anything um i'd rather have a restless army than a bored army because when they're restless it's least it's like looking for stuff to do when they're bored you know you know they're just sleeping so in in our case at the very end of the day what everyone in the in our community can agree on is that it's not a globe that is the one thing that everyone agrees as well we may agree on all these points but the globe sucks <laughs> So that's what we're that that's our flag. Basically, it's a globe with a big X through it. How's that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> How do you use your community to share your truth with non-members? Um, we expand through charities, literacy programs, world domination. Um. No, I'm kidding. None of those things, actually. The um, we we use the community. It basically just spread the word through social media. That's what we do, mostly through YouTube. I mean, it is, YouTube is the biggest television network in the world, whether or not anyone wants to admit it. Um, that's that's basically what we do. I, we just we just plant the seeds. I mean, we do some meetups and we do some conferences, but most of the time, the meetups and the conferences are people that have already been turned. People that have already become flat earth vampires. Uh, the everybody else that you know, you have to you have to get into it at your own pace. So some and, and you know, watching it through social media is perfect because you can sit alone in your room and you know just you know, watch a video whenever you want, have a sandwich, watch some more videos, and then lose sleep, then call in sick for work and watch some more videos, and the next thing you know, <laughs> you become one of us. So that's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and then also, like, what do you think is the biggest lie, um, other than the Earth is, uh, it's a globe, that the science tells us? The biggest lie the biggest science lie. tells us about the globe that, that makes it seem like it's a globe. Um, probably the, the biggest lie would be all the images from space. That would be the big one because, and I and I tell people when you're trying to prove the globe you can't use space you can't use space pictures and and they say well why not i go because we haven't had space pictures very long remember the first full disc shot of the earth was taken in 1972 well it's not like we just woke up one day in 1972 and said it was a globe we had globes for five centuries so how did you know before the space program that it was there was a globe and you know you only have two arguments after that ships going over the horizon and the sticks and shadows argument but so the the biggest lie has got to be everything in space because it's the most recent and it's just they hit it so hard. There's a space story in our media, in the United States media, every day, every single day, there's a new space story. And it's all it's there to reinforce one thing that you're on a globe. They don't even care if you read it. I mean, think of the stories It's like, oh, there's the, there's an interesting thing about the spot on Jupiter. There's a thing on the top of Saturn. Oh, there's a face on Mars. Oh, we've reclassified Pluto and so on and so on and so on. They don't care if you read any of that. All they care about is if you're thinking about Jupiter, it's because you're on the globe. Saturn globe, Mars globe, Pluto globe just goes on and on and on. So, yeah, the biggest lie is every picture ever taken. I mean, I could send you maybe I'll even drop one in. Um, in fact, you know what? Hang tough. You know what I'll do for you? I will drop in a picture. You'll you'll lose uh, or video for one second while I do this. But I want to show you something. For example, here's just a standard photo. And you're going to lose video for one sec while I do this. 
So there's a photo I put on your screen. This is just a random shot from Apollo 12, right? Mm -hmm. And there's tons yes. of these things out there, right? That's an American photo of an American program. God bless America. <laughs> Okay, what are you seeing right here, right? I can see at least half a dozen things wrong physically with this photo. It's perfect. There's so many things wrong, though, with this photo. And I don't care about the stars. That's the easy one, which is like, there's no stars in the background. It's absolutely perfectly black. There's never been a photo taken on the moon with stars in the background ever, ever, ever. And some people say, well, it's a camera um. exposure settings. And, and they couldn't see the stars. Like, fine, you're not going to take a roll of film and just shoot the actual exposure settings that you should. In fact, we'll go even a step further. The astronauts said at no point could they ever even see stars. So it's like, okay, the camera is one thing, but you couldn't see stars either. It was always perfectly black with no atmosphere whatsoever. We'll bypass that. I'll let that one go because I know camera people. <laughs> Let's look at some of the other stuff. All right. Physics. Physics 101. Shadows, one light source. They move in one direction. How many directions do you see? You see at least four. All the shadows are going in different directions. That only could happen from one thing. And that is the light source is really, really, really close like maybe 30 yards away, which would be a spotlight on a soundstage. The uh, the blast crater that's underneath that rover, that little rover right there, right? There is no blast crater. That thing's got a 10,000 foot pound thrust engine. There should be, there should be a, there should be a freaking crater underneath that thing. Nothing. Oh, how about the dish? See that little satellite dish there? That yes. satellite dish has a range. Remember, it's battery powered. 1969 battery powered it has a range on a good day of about 50 miles we looked up the specs on this thing 50 miles and even then at 50 miles you might be lucky if you get morse code out of that thing and they said they were beaming 10 frames of color video a second and two-way communications with pinpoint accuracy and no distortion whatsoever over a quarter million miles to earth through the van allen belts no no, not a chance in hell. Uh, the spacesuit defies the law of thermodynamics. Spacesuit should turn into a basketball. Tell me, tell me how a spacesuit works. Tell me how, well, you know, because pressure needs a container. The inside pressure of that against a vacuum should just expand and it should go tight as a drum. It should explode and the astronaut should be dead. Never, ever happened. We could go on. I mean, the, if you zoom in, I don't know, I don't want a laptop. You zoom in on that capsule, <laughs> that thing looks like it was made out of cardboard and curtain rods. It looks horrible, but in 1969, it looked really, really good because nobody knew in 69. Uh, the spacesuits have, have artic <laughs> articulation points. You can bend your elbows and knees and hands. And you look up anything online in a vacuum chamber. Put anything in a vacuum chamber, it goes perfectly rigid. In fact, people have taken gloves. You put them in a vacuum chamber, You just your arm. You can't move your fingers. And these guys were building things. Uh, mm -hmm. it's just terrible anyway that's one shot so the question is if that's screwed up they the, all these shots and that's just the the shots the videos are even worse if that shot is wrong then it's all wrong and if it's all wrong why and it was one of those things that i always asked myself which was why why fake the space program why fake the moon thing i mean yeah i know the americans we like lying about stuff and it's like go team you know, america's the greatest we'll do anything to do that but it wasn't a great answer. And then when you get into flat earth, you understand. And that is, they didn't want to fake it. They had to fake it. They had to militarize space because you can't let the general population find out about this until you're ready for them to. So there you go. I don't know, remember what your original question was or why I even got down this road. But I think, I think you're okay. Really interesting to hear. Yep. So yeah. And like, what do you think, like, how do you think astronauts play a part in that the astronauts like are just on? puppets yeah. they're just pawns they don't know anything um i think the apollo guys knew i think the apollo astronauts knew and i think they even told them why and that's when they got depressed most of the apollo astronauts became just wrecks afterwards they drank they they hid they didn't do interviews it's like are you kidding these guys i mean look at the, what you want to have fun watch the international press conference that happened right after they got back after they got off their parade they look like like the, somebody shot their dog they were just all so sad none of them were happy and it's like why are you guys so happy i don't think i'd sleep for a week i'd be you know it's like yeah i lived i went to the moon and back which is a whole nother thing 
Um, but I think that was the Apollo astronauts. Uh, everybody else after that, because they're all military. They're all military officers. In the, in the United States, they're all Air Force. And they're high-ranking mm -hmm. officers. Their colonels are higher. You can't make it to a, be a colonel in the military without knowing how to keep a secret. You can't. So I think now they just sign the waivers and it's above their pay grade. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I, there was a buffer there for a second. Wait, you are frozen again for one second. Oh, sorry. Where did I leave off? Repeat it. Send us one more. Um... Okay, so, so the, I'm, I'm sorry. So the astronauts now, they yes. it's above their pay grade. Yes. So they just sign the waivers. It's kind of like um, what they what they've done with spies forever. So, remember, there's no spies, but when you send a spy out to assassinate somebody, you just tell them it's like he's gonna be here in front of this hotel. You're gonna be in this hotel window. You're gonna <laughs> you're gonna shoot him, and that's it. You don't give them the whole backstory. You don't give him the whole political intrigue. He doesn't know why he's shooting him. He doesn't care. He goes, it's above my pay grade. That's you know a perfect definition of, of that. So with astronauts, same sort of thing. They are told, okay, you are going to fake this. You don't get to know why you're faking this. You don't get to ask us why. If you want to find out on your own, fine. But just so you know, we're going to be monitoring all your emails and phone calls and everything else. Because these guys are critical. They don't, everything, everything they can pre-record they will everything they can buffer with time delays they will but they psychologically screen all these guys they know full well if they're going to turn and there was only one astronaut in the history of our program that didn't want to go along with it and that was um a guy named gus grissom well, he was supposed to be the first guy on the moon just so you know and he he was the first guy who said this stuff this technology is terrible <laughs> he goes i have no idea how you think you're going to get to the moon with this it sucks <laughs> He, he even, he was the guy, you can look it up. He was the guy that took a, uh, a coat hanger and a lemon and hung it on the side of one of the training simulators because he said, you know, it's a symbol of, in our thing, it's, it's like it's a lemon. It means it's just terrible. It's awful. It's, it's, it's a bad model. And he, and he died, you know, he, he died in a capsule on, on the ground during a test thing. But imagine that, you know, not, not that long. Why? Because he didn't go along with the program and it was a message to every other astronaut it's like yeah you know what you you're military you sign your papers you don't mess with us there you go mm -hmm. and does hold a uh, whole community believe there that, that there is no universe yes yeah they do okay, um, so that's like one thing you all do. well yeah because there's no you doesn't have to be at the very least there's no uh space isn't what we what what they say it is so again, you know, to throw out the stuff you probably saw in the documentary, which is you have to believe that the earth is spinning at a thousand miles an hour and then going around the sun at 60,000 miles an hour and the whole solar system is flying sideways at half a million miles an hour. And then that galaxy is going through other galaxies at several million miles an hour. And yet the stars don't change ever. They, you know, we've had the same, same Zodiac look up the, you know, the, the, the constellations of the Zodiac, they haven't moved. And we've had Zodiac constellations for several thousand years. Now, if you want to say, it's like, well, you know, they move a little bit every 10 years, every hundred years. It's like, yeah, the Zodiac has not changed in thousands of years. So how does that happen? If you're flying through the galaxy in these different directions, what I'm saying is, and you can look this up. Um, do you know what parallax is? You heard that term? Okay, so par parallax is when you're driving in a car, the mailboxes and the telephone poles are going by quickly, but the mountains mm -hmm. in the distance are going by slowly. Why? Because yes. the mountains in the distance are very, very far away. So if you have stars that are 10 years light, uh, light years away and you have stars that are 10,000 light years away, you should see parallax, meaning the stars that are closer to you should be moving by more quickly. And we don't see any of that ever, ever, ever. And the scientists don't want to address it. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Recent scientific studies about the flat Earth has been done by people within the flat Earth uh, community. Say that one more time. Which scientific studies about the flat Earth uh, have been done by people within the flat Earth society? Who gave a good view about uh, the got beliefs? It, got it, got it, got it. So the the most. Yeah. If we're talking about the scientific method, the tests that we do most often are long distance photography without question, far and away. 
I cannot, I, I've lost count. I don't know how many hundreds or thousands of, of photography tests that we've done uh, where we measure the height of the observer, the height of the object, where the horizon sits. I mean, we've had to relearn so much science just to prove our own points. That's by far, the, in a way, the, the, the biggest one is long distance photography. And we shoot from the beach, we shoot from mountains, we shoot from airplanes, we use infrared filters. Uh, we do everything we can but go to space because we can't go to space because uh, civilians don't go. Um, the second ones we do are lasers. And I know the one you watched in the documentary wasn't great. <laughs> but you got to remember, the director hated us so much by the time we got to the end. He wouldn't even show how he didn't even show a tenth of the experiments he did. That's the one he singled out. Now, did Jaron, the, the guy that screwed it up in the end, did he screw it up? Yes, he did. But I'm not going to give him too much crap because he, what he didn't do was he initially thought that when he went out to that place, that the, the place where he was going at was flat and it wasn't. And he just looked at it on Google Earth and said, oh, well, it appears to be flat. I'll just go at nighttime with a camera team without any dry run whatsoever. And we'll just do it live for the first time. Never, ever, 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 ever. So, you know, the whole test, observe, repeat, even that wasn't done. You know, there was no repeating of the test. Mm -hmm. The first time he melted the laser, but he went back to the same place. He never had line of sight. The laser tests we have done, though, and I can send you wonderful videos on these. Um, in fact, we did one out in um, uh, Hungary uh, a couple of years ago uh, out at a place called Lake Balaton. We shot 40 kilometers with Guinness Book of World Records there with us. And we shot, you know, using military, heavy duty military grade lasers from the beach and shot 40 kilometers without a problem whatsoever. <laughs> Laser tests are, are probably the second favorite test that we do, but they're expensive by comparison. Um, there's only so much money you can spend trying to prove this without you know getting into some real, real money. I mean, we're not going to be building rockets. Yeah, I know the guy that built the rocket in the desert that recently died. But that was the whole other thing, which I don't know if you want to get into. Mm -hmm. Remember him? Yeah, I saw a picture of him. I don't know his name again, but uh... Uh, Matt, 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 Mike Hughes. He was a uh, he was a stunt man, stunt man first, a daredevil first. That but he was basically just creating flat Earth awareness. But when you build your own rocket and you put a big flat Earth sticker on the side, the media is going to take notice. And so, and his parachute failed, and he crashed, and he didn't make it. But was he trying to prove flat earth? No, he wasn't. Was it scientific in any way, shape or form? No, it wasn't. Did it generate a lot of media? Yeah, it did. So I'm not going to regret the money that we spent on him and it. So how's that? Thank you. All right. All right. Hey, by the way, what is, on, what is on your shirt? Mine? Yes. They're fetish. They're what? Fetish. From birds. Oh, feathers. Oh, feathers. Oh, yes. Okay. Cool. <laughs> I've never seen a shirt with feathers. <laughs> really? Okay. No. But what do you with, what do you do with tests that don't prove the Earth is flat? We just test again. Basically, we just keep doing the test. And up until now, believe it or not, if we had a test that actually convinced us, because Again, we're not trying to hide anything. If we had a test that convinced us that the Earth wasn't flat, I wouldn't be talking to you now. I, I have I have told many people, I go, look, prove to me that it's a globe. Prove to me. In in fact, butcher one of our tests. And I will I will just give I'll I'll shut down flat earth, you know, on my side. I, I won't I'll, I'll kill the channel. The reason why we got into flat earth, everyone got into it, is because we tried to disprove it. That's that is literally the t shirt which is we became flat earthers because we tried to disprove flat earth. So everyone ran to the beach and they thought, oh, well, we can, we'll see the curve from the beach. We'll see the curve from, an, uh, from the mountain. We'll see the curve from the airplane. We'll do a laser test over and over again and we won't hit, you know, the other side. Um, we just never, ever, ever see it. We've never, in fact, there's never been a successful test done that's convinced anybody of anything. That because we go out, at, we start out as globalists. We start out as people that absolutely believe in the globe. And by the time we're done, we don't anymore. Hmm. Um, is there also um, a name of an author of a study about the Flat Earth, uh, which you think we should read because it gives a good view of uh, the Flat Earth community? 
Uh, I would go with, you know what? I go with my last book first because we've been, we haven't been doing this that long. So the author would be Mark Sargent. And, and I don't usually, no, I don't usually self promote, but I'm going to in this case because I don't get that question very often. Um, the book is called, because it's a great recap on how we got there. It goes into the experiments, it goes into the community. Um, it's called uh, Flat Earth Clues End of the World. And there's an audio, it's, it's, it's on Amazon, or if you want, there's an audio version, it's free on YouTube. You can also buy the Audible's book if you want, but you can listen to the whole thing on YouTube. But yeah, absolutely. Uh, it is it is the um, 101 guide of how, why you guys are even talking to me right now. It goes into the documentary, it goes into the community, people that hate us, people that we hate. <laughs> um the the different media how the media plays into it and uh what we expect to happen in the future thank you thank you so much oh, fact, fact, wait, wait, wait. yes one go second here just to make sure come on open up this stupid thing you might lose connection for one second there it is. And one more. Oh, yes. So this... Oh, that's the book. There you go. I mean, it's not... I mean, you won't be able to open it. I mean, it's just it's just the cover. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you... You should be able to find it through other things. But yeah, if you, again, you want to recap, you want to get people into it. And again, I'm a freshman recruiter. I wrote that for a reason. I did write uh, the original Flat Earth Clues uh, wasn't even a book first. It was a video series first uh, that I did in 2015, which was turned into a book. But again, that's just basically the transcripts of the clues. This way more comprehensive. Okay. We will uh, look into the book and see all if we can, we can find there. One one more thing, one more thing I'd like to recommend, and that is okay. because I know that you're you're young and you're in you're into the whole cell phone thing and all the all the apps and stuff, the internets. So if you want to check out something that's very very cool, answers your questions very very quickly. If you're into apps, check out the in fact. Hang on, uh, if there's a link for this, it's the flat it's the flat Earth Sun Moon and so I'll paste it in here for you. One second. Uh, Look up this. There you go. Flat Earth, Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. And it's an app. It's an app. It breaks down how the seasons work, the top 30 questions that people ask. It shows you where the sun and the moon are on it. It shows you the continents. It shows you, you can, you can overlay the, the Zodiac on it. It's very, very cool. And uh, I didn't get it for a long time, but I regretted not getting it because my uh, one of our community members spent a lot of time building it, and it's by far and away the, the coolest thing we got. Mm -hmm. Right before we go, I also have another question for you, actually. I don't think so. Because I, what? I do. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, it's so like you're all doing this stuff, like doing research, uh, writing books, doing conferences. Yeah. Like, do you get paid for that? Most of the time, no. Uh, the Nothing's been trademarked, which is weird. Um, I'm one of the few people that actually got paid for some of it, but we nobody gets into Flat Earth looking for the money. Let's put it that way. If you want to make money on social media, Flat Earth is not a place to start because you, you generate, you, you have to go through the hate. Nobody wants to get yelled at and, and you know, criticized like, you're dumb, you're a dork. You know, you hear that enough times like, yeah, the money isn't worth it. Um, some some people make some money off books. Uh, you make a little bit of money off of Google and YouTube. It's not what it used to be because they've been trying to crack down on stuff. Uh, I make a little bit off the book. Uh, the commercial, you know, paid. But most people don't. Most people just, they make the videos because they get enthusiastic about it. They get excited about it. And when you get in, you have this moment. If you turn, I know you guys probably won't. But, but other people, when they turn, they get so pumped up. It's like, I'm going to tell people, I'm going to start a brand new YouTube channel and make 10 videos and, and, and with no editing and just start ranting at the screen. And they will. 
Uh, and so that's why, you know, we, we had so, I mean, there's so much content out there um, that's, but yeah, the money, no, no, most people don't make a freaking dime off of it. I mean, we don't charge like the, the conferences. Yeah. The promoter might make a little money, but the speakers generally don't get paid to go. You know, in fact, I tell people, I go, look, you want me to speak at whatever, just cover my airfare and hotel. I'll go. And we, we don't care. It's because the truth should be as free as possible. So mm-hmm. I'm not I'm not doing one of those self help Tony Robbins speaking things where I'm charging huge amounts of money. It's like all right, and I'll give you the truth. Just pay up. No, <laughs> no. I mean, even like like for example, the my I, I wrote a survival guide um, back when Katr- the Hurricane Katrina hit the United States years and years ago, and mm-hmm. I give that thing up free for for anyone that wants it. It's like look, if it helps anyone, you know, make make a disaster more comfortable, by all means, you know, why would I charge for this something like that? Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. I like that. Thank you. Anything else? So thank you so much for the interview. Yeah, one more thing. Yes. Okay, it's a weird, it's a weird thing. Oh, but can we take a selfie with you? Oh yeah, yeah, sure. How oh, you yeah, do yeah. Okay. You're gonna okay, do a selfie through Skype. Awesome. Yes. Okay, wait. Can we see you? By the way. Yes. Yes. No, not anymore. Perfect. Cool. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I will drop as soon as I, as soon as we I, I close this down. I will drop the audio file in your um, in Skype. And mm-hmm. uh, if you need anything else, let me know. Uh, I will send you. I'll send you a few links in Skype as well. Just okay, you know, I'll, I'll send you the short list for new people. Tons of different creators that make great things. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Have a nice day. All right. You too. See you. Bye-bye. Enjoy. Bye. Bye.